Hello and welcome to Riffle Shuffle and Roll. My name is Mark and today I am very excited to give you a review of this little game for two to three players called Dandelions. Dandelions mashes together dice rolling, area control, and Mancala. And I think it is a delightful recipe and a very enjoyable game. So what I'm going to do is give you a quick overview of how the game works and then we'll come back up top and I will give you my review. Let's dive in, see how to play. So here we have Dandelion set up for a two player game. There is a green token and a set of green dice, but for a two player game, those are just put back in the box. You choose one player to go first and that player places their token on the starting space. And then whoever is going second places their piece down on the second space. At the beginning of the game, each player rolls their dice and then organizes them by number. That's the only rolling you're going to do during the game unless you land on this starting space. Doing that allows you to re-roll any dice you have yet to place. Yellow is going to go first. On your turn, you pick one of your dice. You are going to move a number of spaces equal to the number you choose, and then you are going to place that die on the garden that you land on. At the end of the round, you're going to earn points depending on how many dice you have on each garden. And each garden is worth a point value as well. So this first garden is worth one point per die, two points per die, three points per die, five, and then eight. So this eight point garden is going to be something you're going to want to get dice on. So player one is yellow and they choose to use their number four die. So they move their piece four spaces, one, two, three, four, and whatever garden you land on, that's the garden you place your die upon. Now it's Orange's turn. They're gonna go ahead and use their number three die. So they'll move their token three spaces, one, two, three. Anytime you land on your opponent's piece, you get to move the same number of spaces again. One, two, three. So now they place their die on garden number two. This is a mashup of Moncala and an area control game because you are moving around the board, placing dice depending on the movement. And the area control aspect is you're gonna earn points for every die you have on that garden, you're gonna multiply. And then for having control of the garden, meaning you have more dice on that garden than your opponents, you're gonna earn points for that too. We'll see how that works here in a moment. So yellow would go again, and they're gonna go ahead and choose one of their number sixes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Orange goes, and they'll use, uh, just say one of their ones. So they move one. Yellow goes again. So they're gonna go ahead and use their five. They're gonna move five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. They've landed on the starting space. They place their dice, and now they re-roll all of their unused dice. And then they organize them by number. You may or may not want to do that, depending on the dice you have. Um, he, the player did have a lot of sixes, so they, those were pretty high-scoring dice. But they did get some more fives and fours in exchange, so... They're still doing all right. It's Orange's turn again. They're gonna go ahead, two, three, four, five, six. They'll use a six, and that'll get them to the one, two, three, four, five, six, to the number eight. So now they have, so far they've got majority control on that number eight garden. It's Yellow's turn again. So they're gonna go ahead and use a four. Anytime you, one, two, three, four, land on a garden and place a die, you will move any matching die to one of the adjacent gardens. So he will pick up this four that was already there, and he's gonna move it to garden number eight, to the eight point garden. Now, when you do that, you have to pick up all of the matching dice. So if there would have been other orange dice there that were number fours, you would have picked those up as well and moved them. And you cannot move them to separate gardens you have to pick them all up and move them to the same adjacent garden so as you can see this gives the yellow a chance to get some pieces on this eight point garden without actually landing on it 
All right, now it is Orange's turn again. They're going to use a four as well. So they go one, two, three, four. They place their four here, and then they pick up the yellow die, and they can move it over here, or they can move it over here, and they're going to, of course, move it over to the number two garden. So now they are tied for control over that number one garden, and they still have control over the number two garden. That was a pretty good move. And again, it's yellow's turn. They choose a die. Let's say they use a five. So one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. They place their die. And play like that continues until all of the dice are placed. At that point, we will get to score the board. So let's fast forward to that. Okay, so here at the end of the game, what you do is first you're going to find each player's sprout score. The sprout score is the number of dice you have on a garden times the value of that garden. So for garden number one, which is worth one point, you've got four yellow dice. So that's four points to yellow, two points to orange. And of course, orange, you got four times two is eight. And then here, two times three is six to yellow, three to orange, and so on. Again, showing that that number eight garden, that eight point garden is very important. Then you find each player's seed score. Whoever has more dice on the garden earns points equal to the total number of pips. So garden, the one point garden, yellow has more dice, so they earned 13 points. Orange earns nothing. The two point garden, orange won, obviously, so they earned all those points. Number three, yellow won. The, the five point garden, we have a tie. Each player has two dice, so in that case, Whoever has the fewest number of points wins it. So orange has eight, yellow has 10. So orange wins this one. If there's a tie in the number of pips, then both players earn points. So it's actually like a win-win. And then once you find the sprout score and the seed score, you add those totals together and you have a winner. So in this example, yellow won 82 to 60. And that's how to play dandelion. Now the game is set up to be played with two or three players. I have only played with two players, but based on how it plays, I wouldn't want to play with three. As a two player game, everything gels so nicely. And yes, it's a very tactical game, meaning you are making your decisions from turn to turn. And you can't really apply an overall strategy because the board state changes constantly. So you're constantly reacting to that current state. Sure, you could go in with the strategy maybe of like, I'm going to try to get on to that eight point garden and that five point garden as much as possible. I'm gonna to try to get control of those two garden plots. Yeah, that is a good strategy. But the rolling of the dice determines whether you're even going to be able to do that. And I think that's why I like this game. Because what you do on your turn gives you that sense that you're making a decision that's going to impact your score. And in a two-player game, you can purposefully look at your numbers that you've rolled and move your pawn onto a garden that's going to allow you to push your opponent's dice around. And I feel like I have a pretty decent control of moving my token and placing dice in getting area majority or getting a majority control on that garden. I love how small the board is. Even your smallest dice rolls have the potential to move you from one garden plot to another. And I love how there are fewer spaces as the garden plots increase in point value. So as you're getting to that position, you're like, yeah, I'm going to score. I'm going to land on five or I'm going to land on eight. And then you're like, oh, the only dice I have move me right past it. And then you take into account that the eight guard, the eight point garden only has one spot on it. So if you're the lead player and you land on it, even if the opposite player was in a position to land on that eight point garden, now they can't. And in fact, because you're there, if they land on you, you're only pushing them further ahead. And you can use that to your advantage. Like if you're the player that's behind, you can use that, it's called floating. When you land on your opponent and you're able to double 
the amount of spaces you move, you can use that your, to your advantage to get out in front, and then they can't get that eight-point guard in the head of you again. I mean, as long as you keep the lead. So I think there's a lot of control, even though you are making your decisions at that moment based on the current board state, and it really can change a lot. I felt like I had enough control during this game that it didn't just feel like chaos or random chance. I felt good about it. But I think that changes as soon as you put a third player into the game. You're going to have a lot more uh, puffing, I think it's called, when you land your die on a space that already has that number. And you pick up all those number die and move them to an adjacent garden plot. So naturally, you're going to want to move them to the lower point garden plot. So I, I think with a third player, you're going to just have a lot more of that. And there's just going to be dice moving everywhere. It won't allow you to have that same sense of control over your turn. In my plays, I have found that it's best to just take each turn as it comes. Try to continue to dominate like a low, a middle, and then the high garden. And then if you can, match those dice numbers and move your opponent's dice around to where you want them to be. And worst case scenario, you know, if your opponent gets that eight point garden plot first, then you can just start dumping their dice there from the five and the one and let them have it. And then you take control of the five and of course the one and you might just come out on top. So there, that's a lot for such a simple game. But these are the games that I love. The ones that you can play in 10 or 15 minutes that there's enough there for you to really dive in and feel like you're playing Thinker. But they're not going to take two hours or more. So I highly recommend Dandelions and I can recommend it as a two-player game. The jury's still out for three-player, but my suspicion is it won't work as well unless you're okay with a lot more uh, chaos and chance in your game but as for this um again it's just a very delightful game and i i highly recommend it and in fact my wife has never played moncala and i told her that it's essentially the same thing without the dice rolls you're just moving beads around the board trying to get the beads in your end zones and now i've piqued your interest for that so now we have a reason to go out and pick up a moncala board and give that game a try and that is dandelions this is again a little two to three player game from all play you can easily find this at your local game store have them order it for you get it off of amazon or buy it directly from all play i think um i will get a link down in the description to amazon us hopefully it's on there now that i'm saying that you can be buy it on there but if you can get your hands on this i highly recommend it it is delightful. <laughs> All right. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, best thing you can do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you're notified about when I post new videos, and then give this video a thumbs up. All those things really help me out. They help the algorithm and they help other people see my videos, which makes my video better for, for YouTube. And if you've got any questions about this game or any other game that you would like to see a review for, be sure to let me know down in the comments. I also have games of my own design. You can find the directions for those at Riffle Shuffle and Roll. They're all free games. Website down in the description. More videos for those games here on the channel. And that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep on playing.